I can foresee a time in the future where, quote unquote, the dollar is failing. Mm -hmm. They're printing a lot of money. There's yield curve control. Inflation's running 15 or 20 percent a year. Bitcoin is at 150,000 going to 300. Gold is at 3,000 going to 5,000. And somebody down there in D.C. is going to say, you know what? These sound money guys, they're killing this dollar. They're, they're killing. Right. And this is damaging. This is a matter of friggin' national security. Mm -hmm. We got to save the dollar. You know, we've got a solution to that. We need to tax gold capital gains at 90%, tax Bitcoin capital gains mm -hmm. at 90%. And by the way, and we're going to grab all the Bitcoin. Lawrence Leopard is a popular sound money advocate, investment manager, and gold stock fund manager. Over the past few years, Leopard has been on a journey of recovery, going from a staunch gold bug to a Bitcoin maximalist. While he believes there are lots of similarities between both assets, he acknowledges that Bitcoin is the best hedge against fiat debasement, reckless monetary policies by central banks, and the inevitable collapse of the global financial system. Leopard recently sat for a highly insightful discussion with YouTuber Robert Breedlove during which they discussed, amongst other things, Executive Order 6102. Executive Order 6102 was signed by U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt on April 5, 1933, forbidding the hoarding of gold coin, gold bullion, and gold certificates within the continental United States. The reason for the order was that investors were hoarding gold due to the depressing economic situation at the time stalling economic growth and worsening the depression. The order also required all persons to deliver on or before May 1, 1933, all but a small amount of gold coin, bullion, and certificates in their possession to the Federal Reserve in exchange for $20.67 per troy ounce. During his discussion with Breedlove, Robert examined some concerning parallels between the economic situation in the 1930s and the current state of the U.S. economy, cautioning that the U.S. government may soon be motivated to proclaim a similar order, this time with Bitcoin. As we bring you clips from the interview, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. You can also join the conversation by dropping your thoughts, comments, and observations in the comments section below. Everything you do helps with the YouTube algorithm and immensely contributes to the channel's growth. Thanks, and enjoy the video. So let's go back to why Roosevelt did what he did, okay? Uh, we were in the Depression. It was 1933. A bunch of banks had just failed. We'd had enormous deflation. I mean enormous, like like there's never been an event like it. Um, housing prices had collapsed 80%, 80%, 90%. Um, all these banks, there was, there was just not enough money in the system, even though they were trying to print money and push it out. Mm -hmm. Unemployment was 30%. Um, and they knew that, you know, and, and, and by the way, they were on the gold standard. You know, mm -hmm. um, a dollar could be exchanged for a $20 gold coin mm -hmm. going to a bank mm -hmm. and back and forth. Um, and they knew that they needed to get out of this deflationary environment. And they knew that they were going to need to inflate. And they knew that to do so, they had to push up the price of gold. Mm -hmm. And so what Roosevelt did was, he, 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 and he realized, and, and this is, frankly, it's criminal behavior, and my grandfather hated him for it. Um, he said, you know, turn in your gold or $10,000 fine in jail. Mm. Um, and by the way, there was a lot of noncompliance, even mm -hmm. back then. It was mm -hmm. a much more compliant country that believed mm -hmm. in the government, but still a lot of people said, you know, screw you, I'm not mm -hmm. doing that. But mm -hmm. many people did. And of course, soon after he turned it in, he revalued it um, from the 2067 to $35. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was a 70% devaluation mm -hmm. of the dollar in gold terms. And then went mm -hmm. back on the gold standard but made it illegal for uh, Americans to own it. Um, and so it was really a way of reinflating the currency and getting out of the deflationary event mm. that had occurred. And by the way, that event occurred because of Federal Reserve violating their charter. And Federal Reserve was formed in 1913. Three years later, World War II broke out. Right. They immediately violated their charter mm -hmm. and printed money to help finance the war. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then they kept going and they held interest rates artificially low, which is what created the bubble in 29. And you know Bernanke, who's a scholar of the Depression, said, well, the mistake there was we didn't print enough money after the bubble burst. No, mm -hmm. the mistake was they held interest rates artificially low to create the bubble to begin with. Mm. Right. And, and by the way, that greatly damaged my grandfather and, and his wife who had a business and mm -hmm. they had expanded it in 27 and taken mm -hmm. on debt to expand it. Mm -hmm. And they were getting the wrong signals. You know, mm -hmm. the, the signal mm -hmm. was, hey, the economy's on fire. You got to right. grow your business. Right. 
And of course, the economy wasn't on fire. The economy was inflate, hyperinflating, or you know, right. based on fake signals. Um, so, so that they did it to get out of a deflationary trap. And then they figured letting the letting citizens own this is too dangerous. You know, we, we want to have control of this gold, not let citizens have control of the gold. So, you know, you now can't own it. By the way, um, in the in that decade, the gold stocks, gold mining stocks, went up 10x. Mm-hmm. Um, because it was the only way for U.S. citizens to participate in right, gold. Right, 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 um, right. Okay, let's go. Let's roll it forward because here we are, and um, you know this is a, this is a controversial topic. Okay, because and I've had people, you know, um, in very high places in the Bitcoin world, others say to me, mm. you know, let's not push the hyperinflation narrative, and the reason to not push the hyperinflation is scary, mm. um, and we don't want to terrify people, and we want to be positive about Bitcoin and positive about where it goes. But way back when on Twitter a couple of years ago, I would always post the hyperinflation chart of the day. You know, not being a doomster. Let's just be realistic. One of the possible outcomes of the monetary trap we're in is that we have hyperinflation. You, you just can't deny that. In a best case scenario, we will have high inflation and transition to sound money. And that's what I'm rooting for. Okay. Right. Because I don't hyperinflation hurts a lot of people. I sure. don't want to see that happen. Yeah. But to pretend like it can't happen, I think that's naive too. You're, you're sticking you're sticking your head in the ground. Of course. According to recent estimates from the US Congressional Budget Office, CBO. The U.S. federal budget deficit will grow to $1.8 trillion in 2025 and continue to grow steadily until it hits about $2.6 trillion in 2034. The bipartisan agency also estimates that the deficits as a percentage of GDP will grow to about 6.1% in 2025, levels only exceeded during and shortly after World War II. The 2007-2009 financial crisis and the coronavirus pandemic since the Great Depression. This is why, in an earlier report, the CBO stated that the U.S. is on an unsustainable fiscal path. The situation the CBO captures is worrisome and concerning, yet experts believe the situation would be worse than the agency anticipates. Lawrence captures it beautifully in his pinned post on Twitter. The post, accompanied by a chart of the U.S. GDP represented by the blue line and the nation's debt in the red line, reads... The blue line generates income to pay interest on the red line. See the problem? It's just math. He adds the hashtags Weimar Republic and fourth turning to show the severity of what's coming. Let's get back to the video. Let's move to the government. We know they lie to us. We know they protect themselves. We know they do whatever they can to keep their scheme going. Yes. I can foresee, and this is why I think it's so important for everybody to self-custody and to not be in the ETFs. I can foresee a time in the future where quote unquote, the dollar is failing. Mm-hmm. They're printing a lot of money. There's yield curve control. Inflation's running 15 or 20% a year. Bitcoin is at 150,000 going to 300. Gold is at 3,000 going to 5,000. And somebody down there in DC is going to say, you know what? These sound money guys, they're killing this dollar. They're, they're killing. Right. And this is damaging. This is a matter of friggin' national security. Mm-hmm. We got to save the dollar. Mm-hmm. And just like they sold war bonds to finance World War II, It'll become a crusade, you know. Mm-hmm. Sound money people are evil. Mm-hmm. We have this great mm-hmm. Keynesian system going on, mm-hmm. and they're effing it up. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've got a solution to that. We need to tax gold capital gains at ninety percent, tax Bitcoin capital gains at ninety mm-hmm. percent, and maybe make them turn in the gold. Of course, no one owns gold anymore. So, mm-hmm. and and it would be, you know, all the all the armed people that are buying at Costco, they're not turning in the gold. Mm-hmm. I can assure you of that. <laughs> it's over their dead body, but. Mm-hmm. You know, and they might say, by the way, and we're going to grab all the Bitcoin. And, mm-hmm. and you know, there's some who think very conspiratorially it's possible that they let these ETFs go through mm-hmm. with the idea that mm-hmm. we would much rather have this in a system that we can control of and pull call in than have everybody be a hodler with their own self-custody solution. Right. Because if they do decide to do a 6102 on Bitcoin, right. it's pretty easy. Yeah. You know, they call up Fidelity, they call up BlackRock, they call up all the major, and they say, guys... It's all over. Give them cash. Send the Bitcoin to us. Yeah. You know, it's illegal to own Bitcoin in the United States. Yeah. You know, what are the odds of that potential outcome? They're not zero. Right. I mean, you know, I don't know if they're 50%. I, I don't know how to handicap that. I'd yeah. probably say maybe today my best guess is that'd be a 30% shot. Yeah. I hope that we shove these problems out far enough and there are enough Bitcoiners and enough support for sound money and enough knowledge that their system just dies without them having that last grasp at our throats. Right. Do you right, know what I mean? Right, That's what right, I hope. Right, right, right. Yeah. That we move to our standard without them trying to do that. But 
you know, that might be a naive wish on my part. Sure. You know, they might try to do that. And so, as you well know, but the audience should hear, you know, this is why there is a risk, you know, and this is why we hardcore maxi Bitcoiners say, not your keys, not your coins. Yeah. And, you know, so if you have your coins, you know, on an ETF at, you know, who's custodying at Coinbase, yeah. they could come to you and say, you know, sorry, guys, here's, you know, we'll give you cash. Yeah. We recognize they're worth 200 grand a piece. Fine. We're not going to steal them from you. We're going to give you today's cash value. Right. But you're going to give those coins back to the government. All right. And guys like me, you know, if they go that route and they decide they're going to basically steal the fruits of my 66 years of labor, mm -hmm. my response is going to be, you know, mole on the bay, mother. Yeah. Come, you know, <laughs> come, come and get it. Right. You know, yeah. I, I'm yeah. on a boat to Italy. Yeah. You know, I've got my 12 words and, yeah. you know, unless Italy goes along and if Italy decides not to go along, fine. I'm on a boat to El Salvador. Right. right. You know, right. but right. I, I'm going to live someplace where my property rights are respected. Amen to that. You know, and, and I think I think all hardcore Bitcoiners feel the same way. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm and I'm no longer a U.S. citizen. I hope that we transition in the right direction you know, um, it doesn't happen so quickly that it forces them into that. Yeah. Bitcoiners become more rich and, and powerful. I mean, like I said this, in, in, you know, in another podcast, post Madeira, I, you know, I could see Sailor being president someday. Yeah, I, and, of course. And, and yeah. I actually think that'd be a really yeah. good thing. That'd be a huge one. I mean, I, you know, I, sure. I think, I mean, I would trust any Bitcoiner in high office over the people we have there yes. today. Yes. Anyone. It yes. doesn't matter. Even yes. the guys they don't like. In other news, veteran trader Peter Brandt believes the U.S. Securities and Commission and other agencies are about to unleash another round of witch hunting activities on the cryptocurrency industry. In a post shared a few days ago on Twitter, Brandt predicts a severe crackdown by US regulatory agencies on specific sectors of the cryptocurrency industry, especially staking activities. The post reads, if the crypto community is upset over the SEC treatment of XRP, ETH, and all as securities, wait until the OCC, SEC, and Treasury do a full assault attack over staking. It's going to be a bloodbath. In a follow-up tweet, Brandt notes that staking is flat out illegal and the crackdown will be a complete bloodbath. Shark Tank star Mark Cuban has also expressed concerns about the SEC and Gary Gensler's witch hunting activities against the cryptocurrency. According to Cuban, the former principal owner of the Dallas Mavericks, Gensler's actions could set cryptocurrency investors against Joe Biden's administration impacting his re-election prospects. The post reads, If Joe Biden loses, there is a good chance you will be able to thank Gary Gensler and the SEC. Crypto is a mainstay with younger and independent voters. Gensler has not protected a single investor against fraud. All he has done is make it nearly impossible for legitimate crypto companies to operate, killing who knows how many businesses and ruining who knows how many entrepreneurs. This is also a warning to Congress. Crypto voters will be heard in this election. You could solve this problem for Biden by passing legislation that defines registration that is specific to the crypto industry, just as other industries have registration that is defined for them. Cuban also suggested assigning the role of regulating the cryptocurrency industry to the CFTC. What are your thoughts on Leopard's interview and Brant's and Cuban's tweets? all discussing the inappropriate and uninformed outlook on cryptocurrencies and digital assets by US regulators and some politicians? Please drop your comments and observations in the comment section, subscribe to the channel, and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.